You want me to go and uh, show them the miscellaneous lovely stuff outside? Yeah, alright, so basically all these machines require power to run. And now we're going to go show you... I'm going to show you my glorified mess of power and the different ways to make power. However you decide to do it is completely up to you. I'm going to start with the absolute most basic one. You can get the Arboreal Extractor. It doesn't require any power. You just stick it up against a spruce tree. Spruce tree has the most amount of output. That's why I prefer it. Then you end up having a bunch of pipes lead into a fractioning still. And it's going to basically constantly create tree oil. Tree oil can be used in the compression dynamo to make a little bit of power. It's not the best. It's not ideal. But if you have a series of these, you can get a good amount of power. The only reason why this compression dynamo is not running at all is because I do not have any water running to it. And I didn't feel like adding water to it. I just want to show you the basic setup. So you just have four of these extractors. The only thing that does have to stay, though, is this dirt block underneath. The dirt block underneath and the tree have to be... You just broke it. It's grass work. You just <laughs> broke it! <laughs> Dig it, Brad! You're breaking everything! All right. So then the next most basic setup would be steam dynamos. I just have a series of them. So you can kind of see the progression of different amounts of power once you add augments into them. Oh, yeah. Uh, Here's so another the most machine. basic. Uh, sorry. Oh, yeah, the, the aqueous accumulator. accumulator. What this does is this pulls water in. And basically it just fills up with water from a water source. And he's using these to pump the water through these fluid ducts. We'll show you the fluid ducts in a minute in there. To these steam dynamos. and then the So steam. you can do this for big reactors as well. Yes. That is a very good way to do it. We kind of broke the server doing it, but it was worth it. Um, one of the things I did want to show off, though, is you can do capacitor banks. You can have Ender I.O. conduiting. Um, this is just a way for me to kind of show it off a little bit, some of the different integration you can do. Uh, one thing that is to note, though, is if you get a... What are they called? It's... Give me a second. I'm not prepared, man. <laughs> one of those days. I didn't get any sleep, so I apologize if I'm a little out of it. So I'm just going to go and get a basic leadstone flux, flux duct. They do not connect. So if you plan on running these, they do not connect at all. So I'd recommend having like flux ducts go to a capacitor, then the capacitor be your buffer. That would be your honest best bet. And then from there, you can just have it go. Or if you want to have separate power lines as well. That's another good one. Yeah, we'll we'll show you good ways to distribute and create power later once we get into like big reactors and power mods yeah. themselves. Thermal expansion. I want to get into Draconic soon. That's going to be fun. But yeah. that's way down the line. Yeah. Um. So then you have the steam dynamos. The most you can absolutely get. It's not 480. You can get a little bit more. But I always put the field limiter in there. So that way it doesn't waste a whole lot of power. Because these things do require some sort of burnable fuel like coal. So I normally just leave it as um, the three transmission coils, which generate a little extra power, and then the advanced throttle. They're lovely. I love them. I really do. Um, after that, you can go up to magmatic dynamos, which require lava. So if you have a little uh, ender tank, we will be showcasing this mod a little bit differently later on. But if you have two different ender tanks and you have one connected to a pump in the nether and then one just above like this, instead of the creative portable tank, you set one to output, one to input, and here you go. Put them back it's down. It's lovely. Put both those tanks back down. Now, these tanks are essentially the same exact tank because they're both white, white, white. So if I put lava in, see, if, if I fill it up in the nether, it'll fill up in the overworld. And then if I get an empty bucket... The best part about this, though, straight up, is if you change the color on one... Yeah, it goes away. But if you change it on that one, see, now they're the same bucket again. But now if you change it back to white... Get some bone meal. 
There you go. The lava's still in there. So now, I remember I put the lava so in this specifically one. Specifically on that channel. I'll pull it out of that one. Oh, I didn't mean to flip it. I'll pull it out of that one. And there you go. Yeah, they're basically just connected channels. So if you're going to change channels, make sure that they are on the same before you hook up to anything. It is highly recommended. I've made that mistake before. We'll explain that mod later on, but that's very useful for Anywho. moving the huh. lava to your power generation from the nether. So then this last bit is my conglomerate that I kind of overdid a little bit, but it was fun. So basically you take a pulverizer and you throw coal in there. Once you get coal, it goes into the magma crucible. So the pulverized coal turns into liquefacted coal. After that, it goes into the first fractioning still, which turns into Natfa. And then after that, from Natfa, it turns into rocket fuel. And then once you go to the uh, compression dynamo, one of the augments that you can get is extra power gen and efficiency for specifically refined fuel. Oh, I, I say rocket fuel, but it is refined fuel. Um, ignition and then also plugs. you get the field limiter. That's what yeah. the ignition plugs does? Okay. Yeah. It's a specialization. So if you have a specialization, it means it can only do that one specific thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it says only like one. like with the gears. Only one specialization. You cannot have plates and gears in the same thing. So it forces it to be along that path. But it is fun to have. I love it. All right. All right. What's next? So that was a lot for power generation. And then basically you would just, we're going to show you how to transmit power now. So once you make the power, you got to find a way to get it to your machines. That's what these are for. These are called oh, um, flux. That was not the most efficient way of power. I just did it for giggles because I want to see how much generation of that I could have. You're going to need a lot of coal. Yeah, the point behind that is there are, there are many, many, many ways to generate power, and you guys just got to find what works best for you and your situation with what resources you have available. So There is one specific tool, though. That's this, beautiful. Yeah, the multimeter. So tells it tells you, you how much energy, energy is drawn. And when we cover Ender I.O., I'll cover this a little bit better, but with the capacitor banks... If you put your mouse over the power bar, then it tells you your net gain and net loss for that line. So right now, since we don't have anything running, it's a net gain and loss of zero, but that is something to keep in mind. But the multimeter is good for that as well. Okay, so let's start off with the flux ducts. We got the the worst one, which is a leadstone flux duct. This one has a transfer rate of a thousand RF per tick. So, so if you're running just a couple of steam dynamos, that would be your best bet. Yeah, this one's easy to make. Uh, you basically just need glass, lead, and redstone, and you can make six of them. So you can make a bunch real quick and connect a bunch of crap together, but it's not going to be the most efficient. When you want to move up, you can get to hardened, and hardened has a transfer rate of 4,000, which is four times that. So now, now you can move a lot more power. And to make so this... So to get to that, you need the induction smelter. Yeah, that, that is what you Anything past invar. leadstone, you need induction smelter. It is your best friend. Yeah, to make invar, you would need... Iron and nickel. Iron and I believe and nickel it's two iron and, and one nickel. And the induction nickel. smelter. Yep. I'm looking at the recipe right now. It makes three invar. And then you would make yeah, that... Yeah, smart. And then you can do that. And then we, then we get to the redstone Goody. energy flux ducts. These ones are a little different because you can't just make them and put them down. You have, you have to make something called the the energy flux duct, like the frame for it, and it's going to be empty. What you have to do is now you have to fill that up uh, with destabilized redstone. So basically you have to get a magma crucible and you got to start f putting some redstone in it. And we're gonna have to we're gonna have what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to make the redstone flow from this into this. So we have to go to the configuration and make sure that our output is on the right side. So the orange is the output. Since it's on the right side, we can see that the stuff that comes into here is gonna go out the right side. We want to make sure the left side of this is our input. So we want this to be this side to be blue so that it goes into here. 
And now we can take this and put it into here. And when can I break something and show them at the same time? Yeah, but let if this you shift right click the very center. It just clears it all out. So it's easier to manipulate. So if you don't want all sides active, you can just yeah. cancel them all out until needed like that. We want that to be an output and that to be an input just like that. So now when this fills up and the redstone comes into here, you're going to see it flow out of here into here and then go into this. And then this is going to come down and become a redstone energy cell or a flux duct. And that's what we're going to have up here. Now the redstone energy flux duct, flux duct has a transfer rate of 9,000 RF per tick. So that's significantly faster. And we're going to watch this fill up right now. All right, and it went into here, and then that filled that up. And there we go, now we have redstone energy flux duct. All right, so the next tier up from that is a signalum flux duct. So to make this, once again, you gotta make the empty version of it, which to do that is you take three redstone energy empty flux ducts, and you can put three redstone and then a piece of signalum under it, and it makes three of the empty ones for you. And then you have to fill those up as well, just like you would normally. You would stick it in here, just like that, and it would fill up, and we'd end up with this. And the transfer rate on that is 16,000 RF per tick. Starting to get crazy now. So now we're going to get up into the, the resonant side of things. And uh, basically you have to do the same thing again. Fill it up. And now we have a resonant flux duct. And the resonant flux duct has a transfer rate of 25,000 RF per tick. You're probably never going to need more than this. Unless you're running a lot of machines and you're pulling a lot of power. Even then you could run multiple lines of this. But if you ever need more throughput, you can go and get the cryo stabilized flux duct. This one is a lot harder to make. But what you got to do is you got to make the empty frame. So to make the empty frame, you got to make fused core or uh, I think it's hardened glass yeah hardened glass electrum you know resonant flux duct in the middle and that makes an empty cryo stabilized flux duct frame and then what you would do with that is you have to clear this out I usually just break them to clear it out I'll grab another one it's very effective make that our input and now we need to make something called cryothium or gelid cryothium. So you have to make this stuff called cryothium dust. To make that, you need blizz powder. And to get that, it comes from uh, the blizz, which is a mob that is added into the game by thermal. And you would kill that just like a blaze. And you get a blizz rod, which is like a blaze rod. But I guess normally like they're found in the snowy areas. Mm -hmm. I love them. And then redstone and a snowball, and you can make this cryothium dust. And when you put this cryothium dust in the magma crucible, instead of it making the redstone over here, it's going to make something called gelid cryothium. And this gelid cryothium is what you need uh, to insulate this cryostabilized flux duct. So when I put this in here, I'm not sure how much it takes. I think it's going to take a couple, a couple pieces of that to fill it up. Yeah, and there you go, 500. Oh. And it's going to go and fill up the cryostabilized flux duct. And then we'll look at the stats of that. Uh, don't you need nitre for one of them? Well, maybe one of the frames. I think that's pyrothium as nitre is needed. Pyrothium, yeah. We're doing cryothium. Yeah. Uh, so right we'll here we can look bit. at the cryostabilized flux duct. Has an infinite amount of power transfer rate. Which means that you only need one of these. One line of these, I mean. Like one one connection. One wire. And you can move an infinite amount of power between two points. And you're only going to be limited by how much power you can push out on one end and accept on the other end. And these are super, super useful for connecting big reactors to power distribution walls and stuff. Because you don't need to run multiple lines and you don't need multiple outputs from the big reactor. You can just use one. But that's pretty much it for how to move around power. There are many ways uh, to move around power that don't have anything to do with thermal and like 
Ben was using Ender.io out here. You can see the other conduits right there. Those are Ender.io conduits that essentially do the same thing as all these uh, flux ducts up here. But when you would I think my favorite part about all of this, though, is that none of it explodes like an IC2. So now I'm going to show you how it works. We have an energy cell right here that is in creative and it's full of energy, and this one's completely empty. So if I connect them, this one should start filling up. And you can see uh, if I use a crappy cable, it's going to go really slow. But now if I use really, really good cable, it's going really quick. Now with these power cells, they do have a limit of 25,000 RF per tick. Yes. They do not have full capability like the cryos. So this, but if you have an endless wall of energy cells, it really not. This wire and this wire essentially would do the same exact thing right now, only because this right here is limiting you to the speed of this. The the cell is limiting the basically the speed at which it can receive the energy so even though you can push the power infinitely from there you can't receive it infinitely so you're bottlenecked on this end so I mean in this situation you wouldn't even want to go out of your way to make these because you can't even use them this is the best you could do because this mm. this can't accept uh, any more power depending on how much power Oh, and to remove stuff with the wrench, you just shift right click instead of breaking it. But yeah. So let's get into the item ducts real quick.